1996, I was in a construction accident and I received a broken neck, a broken left shoulder, two broken legs, and a lot of uh, damage to my spine. So with the, the knee problems, I started to seek uh, help for the knees. And I went to orthopedic doctors, but because of uh, the amount of opioids I was on and the um, COPD that I have, no doctor, orthopedic doctor, would touch me with a 10-foot pole. I tried UK, I tried Baptist, I tried St. Joe's. Nobody would touch me. I received injections into my knees. I was told it was made up from the rooster's comb on the top of his head. There was an oil that was in there that they put in to lubricate your knees so the bone on bone wouldn't be so bad. I went and I had a series of six injections in both knees. Um, I got little relief from that. And then they gave me uh, three more injections of some different stuff. It seemed to help for a very short period of time, maybe two weeks at, at best. Finally, I came to the thing I gotta have a knee replacement. And then I've talked to people and then a lot of people had knee replacements and they were fine. And you know, I started thinking, well, it's just like getting your tonsils out. They're doing them so many sure. that, so I find a doctor, he does the knee replacement. He seems to be a very uh, prominent doctor in Lexington from a, a very good organization. Um, he tells me he does 365 knee operations a year that I'm in very good hands. I had the knee replacement done. I um, went to inpatient therapy from the hospital right to a place called Cardinal Hill. I'd done the inpatient thing there. I had some outpatient stuff done for about four weeks and then I decided to do it at home on my own. Mm -hmm. I got one of these uh, leg manipulator machines. They like, um, what they do is they bend your leg, you know, back sure. and forth, and you can set the tension on how, how tight you want it. And I'm seeing the doctor who did the knee replacement at the same time. Um, finally, after all the therapy and everything, every time I walked on the knee, it swelled up like a balloon, mm. and then I couldn't walk for days afterwards. We would have to keep it packed in ice 24 hours a day for three days. Jeez. I'd get up and walk, and then it would swell up like a balloon, and then I couldn't walk again. So I had, went back and forth to his office 20 times. Finally, they tried to do some nerve blocks on me, uh, uh, procedure where they went in and they put like ice to try to freeze the nerve a little cube of ice wow. or something and um, what was happening my thighs are big and their needles weren't long enough to reach down to the nerve they wanted to hit is what they told me mm -hmm. and so the drug rep that was there because he was there during the procedure actually telling the doctor how to do the procedure and the drug rep actually recommended me to Woolward Regenerative Medicine. He wrote it down on a piece of paper, wrote the address, the doctor's name, and he had the phone number. Hmm. So I went home and I contemplated because I've had nothing but bad experiences with doctors since I've been in Kentucky. Uh, one bad experience after another bad experience. Um, and so I called and I made an appointment and I met with Dr. Danish and we just did an interview the first time. Right. And I liked him. I liked him. Um, and I liked what he had to say. Um, he understood everything that I had been through and he had answers 
to what I'd been through and why I was going, what, why, why I was feeling so much pain, still being on opioids and feeling so much pain that the opioids had reversed and the opioids were now causing the pain instead of, you know, numbing the pain. They weren't numbing the pain. They were the cause of the pain and that they had my nervous system completely out of whack. And that's why my wife would bump my toe and it would feel like my foot got cut off. My nerves were so out of whack. So Dr. Danish recommended that we do some injections into my knees. And the first time I got an injection, they worked for a couple days. And so I came back in a week and I saw him and he says, well, we'll try some, you know, some different spots and some different things. So we tried some different spots and different things and it got a little better yeah. and it lasted longer, hmm. you know, and then we did it again and we did it again and it, everything started working. Everything started clicking and, but I'm still having to fly to New York to get the opioids during this time. Right. I'm still flying because I'm handcuffed to the doctor. This is before his arrest. Yeah. And so Dr. Danish told me of a thing I could do to get off the opioids. He told me there's a thing called a rapid detox where you uh, take a drug called ketamine and you stay on ketamine for about four hours and then it's supposed to help rewire your brain to tell your brain you don't need the opioids anymore. So at this point, I'm pretty game to do just about anything because I'm in withdrawal all the time anyway from the doctor lowering my medicine every time I'm going to see him. So I've got nothing to lose. So I do the ketamine. And I go into the ketamine with the most positive attitude possible. And I came out of the ketamine and I felt like God had saved me. I told Dr. Danish that right after the procedure, when I came out of it, the ketamine, I told him that he saved the soul. Today you saved the soul. And uh, I told him he was a superhero. I probably still the effects of the ketamine. <laughs> but to me, to me, he was a superhero because he was doing something to, to counteract all the horrible things I was going through. We are still continuing this process, right? Right. Talk to me a little bit about um, the decrease in medication okay. from after this, this so, first one, and then we're getting ready to go into your second one, yeah? Yes. Okay. I was on, um, before the ketamine infusion, I was on 80 milligrams of Oxycontin three times a day. I was on 30 milligrams of Roxycontin cut down to 11 times a day. I was uh, off the methadone completely. He, he cut the methadone and I was off the subsis completely. And so after the ketamine infusion, I went down to 30 milligrams of methadone. And over the course of two weeks I went from 30 milligrams of methadone to 20 milligrams of methadone which I am currently on right now from all that narcotics almost five grams of narcotics down to 20 milligrams of methadone right now I used to have pain constantly 24 7 would never stop just sitting in a chair doing nothing, I would be dying in pain from head to toe. Um, 
after the ketamine infusion and after going through the short period of withdrawal that I experienced, the pain started to go away. I used to not be able to make a fist. I thought it was arthritis. Dr. Danish told me it was. My nerves were so out of whack from all the opioids that I had taken over 22 years. And today, I can make a fist. I used to be able to go like this. That's about it. And now today, I can make a fist, and it doesn't hurt. Wow. And, uh, and I am grateful and I am glad to have gone through this journey with Dr. Danish. And if there's anything I can do to help one person, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing today. To just help, if I can help one person that has been through what I've been through, or even less than what I've been through, all I want to do is be able to help one person. That's why I'm doing this today. Thank you.